Hi there folks, my name is Nova 24 and welcome to the Nova Wrap, your one-stop location for your simulation release news and goings-on from the week that was. So here we are for another exciting episode on Sunday the 6th of October 2019 and I hope those of you in the United Kingdom have been having a great weekend over with the Flight Sim, car, or the Flight Sim show over at Cosford, sponsored by Just Flight. I do hope you've been enjoying that. There's been quite a lot of news and announcements coming out of that show so um, I don't forget to head over to FS Elite for a lot of the coverage coming out of that and from to Helisimmer.com as well um, much of that of course we will not be covering on this show because of course this show is about new releases but that is a perfect segue though into a piece of a new release that I forgot last week I do apologize and thank you very much to my attentive reviewers for pointing out that I did miss it. Uh, so, of course, I am referring to the, re the release from Orbix of Courchevel Airport in France for X-Plane 11. Um, now, this... Uh, uh, so I, I want to say quirky, quaint, quirky and quaint kind of uh, airport in France... Um, probably is, I, you know, this, it's not been officially said that it's only coming for X-Plane 11, but I can pretty much guarantee that we will only see it for X-Plane 11. Now, of course, the reason for that is, of course, is the slope of the runway. So the airport, uh, Cochevel, is located in the French Alps and services um, the Savoy region in France, uh, servicing the ski resorts of the local area. Now, this runway is only 537 metres long, 40 metres wide, but has an inclination of up to 18.66%, which is the steepest in the world for any international airport. Uh, funnily enough, it, the, an actual term for aviation, in, uh, aviation term was actually coined after the creation of this airport uh, called Altiport, uh, to actually refer, for, refer to any airports is servicing mountainous and terrain, uh, mountainous uh, sort of regions that have significant slopes in them. Uh, so this, of course, uh, with X-Plane 11 being the only major sim at the moment, that I believe the only sim at the moment that actually supports uh, sloped runways, uh, though hopefully we will see something better, something like that coming to uh, Microsoft's new flight simulator when it comes out in the distant future. But in the meantime, uh, this rendition of Cochevelle Airport uh, it includes a highly accurate um, hand sculpted mesh train mesh for the airport and the uh, uh, surrounding mountains as well. Uh, includes uh, uh, ultra HD textures in full PBR as well with full support for dynamic lighting with full and accurate uh, modeling of not only the airport but also the town of Cochevel also in PBR uh, with PBR runway textures included as well with a variety of range of French Alps or custom French Alps Autogen uh, and a custom place for trees and scenery as well. So looking pretty damn amazing, pretty damn cool, coming in at pretty standard uh, all week's price, coming in about 22 US dollars, all your regional equivalent available now from Orbix. Now, of course, continuing on with other X-Plane 11 releases this week, we might as well stick with scenery. The guys over at Fly Tampa um, have uh, released their latest um, uh, port over of content over onto the X-Plane platform, and this time is their rendition of the Athens Airport. Now, I do partially, you know, I, I do almost want to say that this is a straight port over, but not quite. Um, so the layout of the airport is looks like it's a straight port over from their um, their ESP platform one. No real changes there, but the big implement the big update here though is that they've got full implementation of PBR textures and dynamic lighting are included with this one as well as well as animated uh, uh, apron vehicles, trains, and highway traffic, uh, and a variety of uh, terrain pavement rendition techniques as well. So also, is fully the explained version is fully compatible with SAM animated jetways and docking signs as well. Not a lot of details on the airport. Other other than that, what I've just given you, as I said, this reading pretty much just going through off the uh, company website. But as I said, the, probably the big point is is the fact that it is supporting PBR textures and dynamic lighting, which is exclusive to the X-Plane version of from Flight Temper. So uh, just something to keep in mind. And if you are wanting to pick this one up, you're looking at paying twenty six US dollars or your original equivalent available now from Fly Temper. Continuing on with ESP scenery releases, and uh, this was a, a one that sort of definitely caught me by surprise. So this is from uh, developer Short Final, um, Short Final, Short sorry, Short Final Designs. So they've come up with Short Final Designs Global. Now this immediately for me raises a question that they are looking like they are taking on. Um, 
They they literally look like they are taking on Orbix. Uh, so this is F, uh, SFD Global. Now this is essentially the equivalence of what Orbix have in terms of their FTX Global for the ESP platforms, which is a full replacement of all your ground textures, um, terrain textures for the entire planet. Now. With SFD Global, you get the entire planet redone. So you've got uh, completely new photo photorealistic ground textures um, spread across eight different regions uh, and all based on uh, high resolution aerial imagery and sort of then hand curated, handcrafted to actually sort of work as order as um, geotypical textures for those regions. Not only does it include that, it also includes a global set of forest updates including 4k textures for forests, including updated tree models, realistic size and density and various different tree variants for the different biomes around the world, and then a range of landmark updates as well. Not only do you get landmark updates including the Twin Towers over the, uh, the two towers in Kuala Lumpur, you also get updated autogen for the entire planet. Not only is this autogen um, customized per region, so as I said, you get eight different regions for the for, for the world with different three D models for each region. You also get uh, fully implemented four K textures for each high performance model, uh, low poly models, but still they, so the high performance models that may have low polys but still look the part. They are fully compatible with Ortho for XP overlays as well, and full implementation of PBR material on each of those autogen buildings. So that's a lot of stuff going on in this add-on and especially considering the price. So this one's coming in for the absolutely, to be honest, bargain basement for 30 bucks US. Uh, for those who may not know, Short Final Designs, that's just the, the Mr. X um, who's produced a lot of really high quality uh, freeware scenery out there. So his modeling skills and, and his uh, scenery creation skills are definitely not under question. And I said, it's a really interesting sort of um, challenge to Orbix as well and their perceived sort of uh, scenery dominance. So uh, be very interested to see if for those of you who do get it, I'd be love to hear if your feedback and what your experience is. For me, it actually looks incredibly impressive. It really does. So yes, but if I want to pick this one up, this one is available from the explain.org store. So they're coming at 30 US dollars or your original equivalent available now. Continuing on with X-Plane 11 releases, this time from the guys over at V Sky Labs releases their latest aircraft, in this case an ultralight, well it's a, an ultralight trike. Now I've got to admit that I, ever since I first fired up FSX, I've always had a bit of a soft spot for trikes now. I've never flown any other trike other than the default FSX one. Um, and I was, I, admit, I, was a bit, I was a little sad when I saw it didn't make its way over into prepared. Um, but yes, the the Aerolus, Aer, 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 Aeros 2 Ultralight Trike Project from VSky Labs um, is their uh, rendition of the Aeros 2 from an Aeros Limited company. So um, it's fully endorsed um, by Aeros Limited as well and provides a very high-end simulation of the Ultralight Trike powered by the Rotax 503 engine. Um, now, in their own words, it's designed to stretch the limits of X-Plane 11's cutting-edge experimental flight model. Now. What that means, I don't really, I'll be honest, I don't know. I couldn't really get any more detail about that. Um, so I don't know, because I understand, I know from speaking with with, with uh, Belgio and Sergio from Helisima.com that there is sort of a couple of different flight models in that, so it could be interesting for that one. But it is designed also for VR, so if you VR users, it's designed for that, uh, but it is designed to optimize and use all of the X-Plane's default features. Uh, so coming through, I must admit, it looks absolutely insanely detailed uh, and looks awesome, and just looks like a barrel of fun. Um, it's got a full set of real physics, including uh, incorporating weight shifting and wing simulation of uh, the a hang glider trike of which this is uh, designed uh, it also includes a fully uh, uh, functional and optimized uh, rescue system which is the ballistic magnum 450 uh, and a variety of different uh, unique trike flying aspects of being simulated including stalls slips spins and tumbling so looking pretty awesome for this one coming in at a uh, reasonably good price for it as well coming in at 20 US dollars or your original equivalent available now from the sky labs all right, moving out of the X-Plane 11 world, moving into the ESP platforms, and starting with the guys over at Just Flight. Uh, they released this week their final chapter of their Real Scenery Next, VFR Real Scenery Next Gen 3D for the British Isles, being Volume 4 of Scotland. Um, 
again, as we've highlighted in this uh, sort of in, in the Nova app before, uh, this one again pretty much takes is uh, is a is a reboot of their original VFR real scenery, um, and provides updated uh, senior terrain images and aerial imagery for this time most of uh, Scotland. And actually, as I said, it completes the full collection of the British Isles in with this release. Uh, all of these aerial photos have been taken from 2015 and newer. Uh, have all been custom uh, custom curated to actually designed to work together and make sure they are as cloud free and accurate as possible uh, with a full set of uh, high resolution textures and coming through with everything from 1.2 meters per pixel resolution for most of the islands down to 60 centimeter per pixel resolution for others also includes a 5 meter ultra high definition elevation terrain mesh included as well uh, with a whole slew of custom scenery objects adjusted default landmark objects and optional night textures as well uh, also includes water masking so you can actually use the water as well for those of you who are wanting to waterway, operate from waterways. Uh, includes a whole slew of airport updates as well and as I said looking pretty amazing and as I said um, it's very interesting as I said because uh, I believe now with this completion they've completed their uh, British Isles ahead of Orbix doing the same. Uh, now this one's coming in at uh, 38 US dollars or your original equivalent available now on from Just Flight. Um, just so you know as well there is actually a bundle price as well um, so if you actually wanted to get the four four volumes um, so to get them together it is actually slightly cheaper to pick them up it's about, uh, about 20 bucks 20 30 dollars cheaper if you want to pick them up as a single bundle uh, you can pick that out as the VFR real scenery next gen 3d bundle uh, available also from just light all right, continuing on with other scenery releases for the ESP platforms, and uh, for this one from DMD Developers, their release um, of Magdeburg City Airport. Uh, so this is uh, a uh, airport in the central part of Germany. Magdeburg was interesting in its historical sense in that it was uh, part, they were part of the east uh, of East Germany uh, and uh, serves as actually uh, and actually has in the parking lot and a, uh, and a former Tupolev Tu-134 airliner that was used to be operated by the East German airline Interflug uh, and serves as a monument to the long-standing Soviet-German friendship which well you know that's uh, open to interpretation. Now, yeah, this uh, rendition of the airport and the surrounding city uh, includes a variety of uh, objects for VFR navigation, including all major all major landmarks for the surrounding town and surrounding area. Uh, high resolution uh, 2K imagery used throughout. A variety of animated models for balloons and gliders are included as well. Full implementation of PBR materials throughout on 3D models, both of the terminal buildings, uh, the airport buildings and uh, airport scenery objects. And also fully compatible with Orbix Global and, and Europe and Germany. There is also a set of uh, optional photo reel terrain for the airport and city area available for free. Uh, via redemption from the manual. So this one's available from Simmarket coming in about 17 US dollars or your original equivalent available now. Continuing on with aircraft releases now for the ESP platforms, the guys over Caranado have come out with their latest release uh, by releasing the Embraer um, Brasilia 120. So the Brasilias are always kind of interesting, quirky little airliners. They're just, they're small, compact, and fast. Um, not huge in Australia, um, but they were huge uh, in um, uh, North and South America uh, and did see quite some service inside the US as well. Uh, sorry, inside Europe as well. Uh, now, this rendition comes to us from Carinado with the usual high quality coming in with fully compatible with all of the ESP platforms, FSX all the way through to prepared 4.5 and above. Uh, full implementation of PBR textures for the higher versions of the newer versions are prepared. Full so aircraft in avionics is modeled off the real aircraft, including uh, full modeling of real startup procedures, a full set of uh, high definition sounds recorded from actual Embraer 120s, uh, as well as a full set of updated flight dynamics, correct modeling of the takeoff run and landing roll as well, with full custom sets of brake sounds for taxi and landing run. Uh, original custom autopilot, custom coded autopilot, uh, full 4K textures throughout, models throughout the rest of the real thing. Uh, realistic night lighting effects, is done included as well along with a fully modeled cold and dark setup as well so overall pretty standard pretty high quality that we see from Carinator on a regular basis coming in at 45 US dollars or your original equivalent available now from Carinator 
continuing on with aircraft releases this week and this one is a it's tentatively a prepared v4 exclusive though the developer has said that they are intending to bring it to the rest of the esp platform in the future uh, and we've got lionheart creations uh, coming out with their latest release the zenith ch701 now this is a quirky little um stole aircraft that was designed by a canadian uh engineer um and designed to essentially also it is designed to be for bush sort of adventurous bush pilots um that needed to be able to operate out of very short strips in very remote areas of canada um but it was designed to be an affordable and easily accessible aircraft in terms of being offered as both a kit build aircraft or an actual aircraft that is uh, you can purchase pre-built um so the aircraft is a tricycle under sorry tricycle undercarriage format fixed wheels um, with uh, Tundra tyres as standard. Uh, it's gone through various different designs over the years and it still continues to be used um, because of its lightweight and its design meeting the requirements for the light sports aircraft category or sports pilots license category, um, as well as a variety of ultralight regulations for a lot of aviation countries around the world. So it means it's, 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 it's aviation that's more accessible than not. Uh, this has gone through, this aircraft's gone through a variety of different uh, sort of experiences over the years, including um, uh, sort of including being, having the uh, ignominious knowledge, uh, ignominious uh, designation of being the uh, uh, one of the most copied designs um, in the world and there's a variety of unlicensed, unauthorized versions are being produced in various countries around the world, which is a very interesting, uh, which is kind of interesting. Otherwise, it did, was previously briefly produced in um, the Czech Republic uh, during the, two, the 90s, uh, late 90s and early 2000s uh, under a license agreement as well. So this one's come through uh, with a highly detailed and a highly accurate 3D model with full implementation of PBR high uh, 4K textures throughout set of full metal materials uh, replicating the alum uh, aluminium skins uh, 3d custom coded instruments including uh, sort of needle vibration as well uh, very accurate and uh, highly accurate 3d uh, sorry highly accurate flight characteristics including its stole performance uh, and highly accurate uh, re uh, setup and co and use of the interlinked ailerons and flaps system. Uh, it is designed to be using the 4K textures, however there are a set of low, lower resolution 1K textures uh, included as well if you did um, want to lower your resolution at all, not sure why you would, but perhaps for, for, for performance reasons. Um, but yeah, it's interesting that there's a, it's a lot come through here as well. Uh, also includes a free piece of scenery as well, which is the Mexico Memorial Airport are included as well, which is a a uh, bit of uh, fun for you to be able to operate rock around in that as well. So, as I said, very interesting, very cool little uh, aircraft in real life and a chance for you to fly in um, in the, your sim now. Now, as a really weird, kind of cool, kind of weird thing at the moment um, is that at the moment there's a limited time offer where if you so desire you can actually by purchasing this from Lionheart Creations you can actually use the purchase price as a to take you can take the purchase price off the cost of buying the actual genuine rudder kit off the actual aircraft so the idea is is that you can buy different components of the aircraft separately to build yourself to decide whether or not building your own aeroplane is actually for you and if it is you can then buy the other parts of the aircraft and make your own aircraft uh if not it's a really kind of cool thing um it's about 400 bucks but yeah you get the price of this uh 3d virtual aircraft off the cost of the rudder kit so kind of weird kind of cool there you go uh, so this one's coming in at 25 US dollars or your original equivalent either available or direct from Lionheart Simulations or from your favorite flight sim retailer available now. Continuing on with aircraft releases, this time moving into the world of DCS. And of course, the uh, long-awaited F-16C Viper has now hit early access release. So, uh, what does that mean? So, in the usual sort of thing, we no longer have to say two more weeks uh, for the release of this one. Um, so, it's come through, it's been, uh, it's been released, it's partially available, like it's... It's like a lot of things with early access. You get some things available, some things are not. Um, at the moment, basically, it flies. Um, the engine works. Some of your 
avionics working. Uh, most weapon systems are currently up and running. Um, the helmet mounted queuing system, which is uh, which is um, it was a fascinating piece of technology that's modeled as well and included as well. The lightning target pods, um, variety of air to air and air to ground weapons are included and operational as well as well as the uh, major um, pieces of the avionics to keep it flying. Um, there are a few new developments as well as a few different weapon sites, uh, weapon systems, as well as a modeling of the Link 16 data link and the new IFF system unique to the Viper. Um, however, there are, so sorry, the IFF system is coming. It's not currently um, available. Um, autopilot apparently is not working at the moment, according to people, uh, as well as a variety of flight model and um, engine modelings are still uh, not quite there yet along with a few other things so just remember folks that if you are picking this one up and you are buying it you are buying into an early access you are buying into an incomplete product uh, please rec please remember that when you are picking that up now they did have a simultane simultaneous release for this both on the non-steam version and the steam version now both of these are available now coming in at 80 US dollars or the original equivalent available now from DCS Alright, moving out of the flight simulation world and moving on to the permanent way. The Gozo Train Simulator came out with a release this week. This time they released the Regional Railways British Rail Class 142 Pacer. Now, this has to be the most perplexing, weird and kind of cool piece of British Rail history, I think, ever. Um... So the scenario, the scene was, the 1980s, the, the British Rail Fleet is basically falling apart um, and the government of the day was being very tight-fisted with money and basically said we are not giving you the money that you need to buy your shiny new trains from the Germans and the Austrians and everybody else who makes good, really good trains in the world or the Canadians so instead you have to come up with your own designs but we also we're going to make you sort of not pay very much for it um, so the plan was that they would actually create two classes to be developed over time. So there would be the Sprinter class, which would actually go on and be very, very highly successful in the future, and that was their long-term development goal, and that was the one they sort of funneled their money, is their, their long-term um, sort of, you know, quality, high-speed, efficiency, you know, unit that they want to have for the long term. But in the meantime, they needed something to be able to fill the gap, to be able to sort of replace trains that were literally falling apart and use something before the new sprinters arrived. And this is what became, this is what became, and they again, turned into the Pacer. Now, the Pacer is basically they got a whole heap of Leyland, British Leyland buses, cut the bottoms of them off dropped out the road running gear, slapped them on the back of a freight uh, of a freight wagon and called it a train. Um, it has to be the most hilarious, messed up, but cool piece of British engineering I think I have ever seen or heard of. Uh, basically, it became a diesel powered, uh, a combined diesel electric, um, uh, a, 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 sorry, a diesel engine user, a unit. Um, they did have electrical options available to it as well. Um, and it was basically a bus on rails. It's messed up, kind of cool. Um, passengers hated them. They, they were rough because of the, 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 it was like there's no shock absorbing, there's just, it just ricketed, it was awful, but it had a huge impact on British Rail because of the fact that they were able to churn these out very, very quickly, uh, with uh, 96 of them being built between 1985 and 1987, uh, and being able to put straight into use on regional service and replace a lot of the trains that were falling apart and becoming a safety hazard. So, it has a fascinating history. Um, I don't believe any of them are still in service, um, but yeah, kind of weird, kind of cool, just just a fascinating piece of British rail history. It really is. Uh, now, this is a um, uh, highly detailed rendition, high accurate 3D model of this one in an as-built condition. Includes a couple of different British rail liveries, liveries including provincial and regional railways. Uh, the original bus seats are modelled as well, and a full uh, sort of startup shutdown sequence and fully quick drive compatible as well. Now, you also get three career scenarios with this one. Of course, as usual, the career scenarios require a different add-on to be uh, available, which is the Liverpool-Manchester route add-on, uh, in order to be able to fake the, the included scenarios. But to pick this uh, train up, this classic piece of rail, British rail history, you're looking at paying 20 US dollars or your original equivalent available now on Steam. Sticking with public transportation but doing something a little bit different. I saw a double release this week. Um, so it's it's kind of two games in one or one add-on for two games which is 
kind of weird, but anyway. Um, so for this is the Man Lions Intercity Bus Family that was released uh, for both Tourist Bus Simulator and Fern Bus Simulator. Um, now this add-on includes three different versions of Man's uh, Lions Intercity uh, Bus, the R60, 61, and 62, um, which is fully licensed um, by Man as well. So it includes a uh, four gear auto the full rendition of the four gear automatic transition system transmission system, uh, reactive dashboard displays with information about speed and readiness for departure, stop brake with startup interlock. Detailed uh, driving cab included as well, including ability to do driver monitoring with navigation and rear view camera. Uh, kneeling system is modeled for the bus as well, which is kind of cool. Uh, usable driver windows and sun shield and a whole heap of other little features as well. Uh, laterally opening rear doors, interactive controls for doors and luggage compartment with full uh, modeling of the lighting system as inside and out as well. So. As I said, this is a kind of weird one because it's the same add-on but for two different sims. So you only have to buy it once. If you buy it once, you get both versions. So you don't have to buy for each separate one, which is kind of cool. Um, so for ten bucks, for ten US dollars, you get um, your Man's Line City Intercity buses in both um, Tourist Bus Simulator and Fern Bus Simulator, available now on Steam. In a different simulation of this week, the guys over at Fish and Sim World released their latest piece of DLC, their uh, Pro Tour Tackle Box Equipment Pack. So, uh, this is a 50 item pack uh, giving you a range of new stuff. Uh, you're looking at four new wrappers for boats, four new rods, a whole heap of new lures as well, including uh, lures from Booyah and Yum. I, I, seriously, that's a brand? Uh, and some baits, a whole heap of sack of that, and, and very other models and stuff for apparel including officially licensed apparel from Woofty as well as exclusive Pro Tour clothing. Uh, so this content's all available for your fishing sim experience for a grand total of six US dollars or your original equivalent available now on Steam. And finally, rounding out the Nova app for this week, we saw the guys of SES Software release a double release for charity this week. Uh, so, um, it's this is one of the things, it always makes me happy when I get to see and I get to report on when the simulation community gets together and do really cool things like supporting charities. Um, so, this year, the uh, SES Software has decided to throw uh, itself and uh, in behind and support the pink uh, uh, the pink ribbon charity so for those who may not be uh, pink ribbon um, is a is for the international breast cancer awareness um, and there are a variety of charities around the world that sort of that, uh, take part in this. Um, so you can sort of, uh, a lot of very different ribbon days. Um, so to show your support and understanding and also to give out information about breast cancer um, and how it impacts people's lives. Um, it impacts, you know, some very close friends of mine have been impacted by it. Um, so it's one of those really, it's one of those things that's, uh, that's, uh, that's sometimes talked about, but sometimes not. It's one of those sort of, not a taboo topic, but at the same time, it's not, sometimes always uh, in the public gaze. Um, so what they've, SES Software have done is they've actually created two new packs. Um, so one for European Euro Truck Simulator, one for American Truck Simulator. Um, the, each of these packs is two bucks, um, but 100% of the proceeds do actually go to pink, to, to breast cancer research and charities. Um, so this year, so this time around, they're supporting two charities this year. Um, so they're supporting the Breast Cancer Research Foundation of the United States. And they're also supporting the Alliance of Women with Breast Cancer um, in the Czech Republic. Um, so both of these charities are receiving all of the 100% of the um, uh, proceeds of these two add-on packs will be going there. Uh, they're also doing it in driving awareness inside a new event inside both of the Sims as well. So that's a really cool thing. So I've got to say huge shout out to SES Software for being awesome. Just, yeah. Great work, guys. Great work. So on that really positive note, uh, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me. That does wrap up the Nova app for this week. So thank you very much for joining me. Don't forget, as always, to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying these videos and want to see more. And of course, as always, you can catch up with me and all the things I'm up to between videos by finding me on Facebook and on Twitter. Just search Nova in 24. All right, folks. Thanks very much for watching. Take care. Safe skies to all. And we'll see you next time. Bye for now.